hello dear students welcome back to the session uh, in the previous session we have started module 4 clutches and brakes so that clutches part uh, that is related to the design of clutch a single plate clutch and multi plate clutch that is over so here uh, the clutch is what uh, that is a particular mechanical device used to engage or disengage the driven shaft with the driving shaft where uh, the concept that is to be considered there is a frictional force itself. So because of the concept of or by using the concept of friction itself, uh, the clutch is designed by using single plate clutch uh, as well as multi-plate clutch by using uniform pressure case as well as uniform wear case. So similar to that uh, clutch, the next component that is to be designed here is brake. So brake is uh, again, it is also a mechanical device itself used to control uh, the motion by absorbing the kinetic energy of a moving body or by absorbing the potential energy of the objects which are being lowered by the hoists or elevators. So the main difference between the clutch and the brake is that in case of a clutch, the both, both the members, they are rotating or they are in motion which are brought in contact but here in case of uh, the brake the member or the moving member is brought uh, is uh, brought to contact with the stationary member so that stationary member when it is brought in contact with the moving member what happens because of the friction or the resistance to the motion the particular rotating element or the element which is in motion that is uh, retards its motion as well as it is going to stop. So what we say the brake is applied. So that uh, moving member that may be a wheel or that may be a rim or that may be a particular hoist or the component which is being lowered by the elevators. Uh, so the particular stationary member, the stationary member is a block or a shoe or that may be a band, right? So these are the things that we can discuss here, or we will going to we are we are going to discuss in this particular uh, part. So block or shoe brake, block brake or shoe brake. So there are mainly two kinds of brakes here, block brake and a shoe brake. So related to this first kind, uh, say single block brake as uh, shown in figure. So it consists of a block that we can see here and which is brought in contact with the rotating wheel. So this is the wheel which is brought in contact with that block. So this block is brought in contact with the help of a actuating force applied at the end of the lever. So this is what the lever which is uh, fixed at one end and the other end is uh, subjected to the loading condition. What we say or what we call it as a actuating force. Hence this is applied so what happens this uh, block that is coming in contact with the uh, rotating wheel which may be rotating in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction so that what happens the tangential force because of the resisting action exerted by the block that is acting tangential to the rotating wheel so that what happens the rotation of the wheel that retards and stop the rotation so here uh, the block which is consists of a short shoe mounted on a uh, lever which is pivoted at a particular point. The block is pressed against the rotating wheel by an effort F at the end of the lever. So the other end of the lever is pivoted to on a fixed point which is called as a fulcrum here. The frictional force produced by the block on the wheel re will retard the rotation of the wheel. So this type of brake is commonly we used in railway trains. So here the brake is applied, the lever with the block that can be considered as a free body and uh, that will be in equilibrium under the action of the following forces. So the lever which is with the block that is to be uh, said to be in equilibrium uh, only when, when the, uh, the particular forces or the following forces are say these forces they are in uh, equilibrium so what are those different forces they are acting with respect to the block drum or block or uh, shoe brake so the applied force at the end of the lever that is the very first parameter 
and then uh, the second parameter is the normal reaction that is fn between the shoe and the block so normal reaction that is shown here so this is what the normal reaction and uh, this is the force applied at the end of the lever and this is the tangential force which is exerted so which is also called as frictional force which is always uh, in the direction of the rotation of the wheel that is what the force which is opposing the friction exerted or frictional force exerted by this shoe brake or shoe or block and another one is a pin reaction so with respect to the particular lever which is used here uh, with the block that is said to be in equilibrium under the action of all these four forces so here with respect to the design of uh, this uh, shoe brake single shoe brake or block brake the different notations that we are using say f is the operating force and t is the frictional torque exerted on the wheel and uh, as uh, the wheel is rotating as the wheel is in motion means that is rotating with some rpm and uh, that is going to transmit the motion so that is what the torque is also transmitted here or the torque exerted because of the application of the brake that is applied here and uh, two theta that is the angle of contact uh, of the block so here so the angle between these two lines or the angle embraced or the included angle of this uh, block with respect to uh, this wheel that is what represented as two times theta two times theta so that is related to the angle of contact of the surface of the block it is and uh, that angle is shown here so this is what the angle two theta so this angle is two theta so this is the angle embraced by or the angle of contact of this block with the rim so this two theta value is usually less than 60 degree or it may be greater than 60 degree so that particular cases that we will discuss while solving the problems so the next thing is uh, mu mu is the coefficient of friction between the uh, wheel and the block or the rotating drum as well as the shoe and fd that is the tangential force and uh, that tangential force that is usually calculated by using the ratio of or equation of the torque that is t by r here or this t is also calculated by using the equation say t is equal to the fundamental equation it is that is the tangential force multiplied by r tangential force multiplied by r so by using this equation itself ft that can be calculated tangential force is nothing but the force that is exerted on the uh, tangentially on the wheel that is in the direction of the motion no doubt but it is the opposition offered for the frictional force exerted by the block which is mounted on this particular wheel so this is uh, with respect to the uh, tangential force or braking force you can say and uh, fn fn is the uh, normal force so fn uh, is the normal force and as i said so this force tangential force which is opposing the frictional force so frictional force is given by the product of normal force and coefficient of friction between the um, wheel and the block so by using this relation itself so fn that is calculated by using uh, the same relation that is ft and uh, this mu is taken to the uh, other side so this gives the value of fn so fn is, is not calculated directly here but fn can be replaced by the ratio of uh, tangential force to the coefficient of friction and um, the next thing that is related to the notations b and a so these are the important notations in addition to these two there is another notation that is b c so b is the distance between the fulcrum pin or we can say that fulcrum pin as the pivot point and the center of the shoe and a be the distance between the uh, center of the shoe and end of the lever where the effort is applied and uh, c is the distance between the fulcrum pin or the pivot point and the line of action of uh, tangential force ft 
so this is what the notations that are to be used along with the block suppose if i consider uh, this expression this particular figure which is uh, given here so the notations what we have already discussed say this is the figure which is available in the data handbook in page number 267 of the data handbook <coughs> page number 267 of the data handbook and figure a figure a it is so with respect to this figure suppose if you have the data handbook please verify the equation or the particular sketch page number 267 of the data handbook of data handbook so this is 7 so this is refers to a figure a there in the data handbook figure a so this according to this figure say before going for the particular cases there are three different cases that we have to discuss here so before considering these three uh, cases so first of all we see the notation say this is the fulcrum point or the pivot point we can say here pivot point or the fulcrum point so this is uh o and uh, this is the force applied at the end of the lever and this is the distance a a is the distance between center of the drum and the end of the lever between where the effort is applied and b be the distance between the fulcrum point so this is also regarded as the fulcrum point itself fulcrum point so distance between fulcrum point o and the center of the drum so this is b so and in addition to that the normal force which is always uh, in, in the perpendicular to the block perpendicular to the block and or say the normal it is a force exerted on the block uh, uh, so that is perpendicular to this particular surface itself and the tangential force which is the force opposing the rotation or the say uh, the frictional force exerted by this uh, block suppose if it is rotating in clockwise direction so that the tangential force that acts in the direction of uh, ft itself but this ft is the force exerted uh, by the uh, wheel on the or because of that frictional force which is exerted here right frictional force force of friction so if these two are equal then the particular rotation of the wheel that is stopped here otherwise if uh, this is less and this is greater in that case this starts again or this will continue with its rotation and uh, in addition to that uh, uh, say there is a another component which is tangential force and a normal component so these are the two additional forces so as i said one more that is a pin reaction so pin reaction that is exerted at the point of this pivot point or fulcrum point so these are the four forces this is first force and then this is the second force which is normal force and this is the third force and this is the fourth force under the action of all these four forces the lever that will be in equilibrium in addition to that the different notations also we have come across what is a what is b and then f means what and also the distance between the line of action of uh, ft and uh, and uh, one more that is uh, pivot point that is represented here as c so that distance that we can see here so this is what that particular distance distance between ft and fulcrum pin o so these are the three important notations that we have come across so now Uh, to discuss uh, the design concept of a block brake or a single shoe brake there are different cases that are uh, to be considered here say usually there are three main cases that we have to discuss so the first case that is to be discussed here or that is to be considered here is when the line of action of tangential force ft that passes through the fulcrum or the pivot point here there are two sketches they are given where the block is placed at the upside of the drum or the block may be placed below the or lower side or down side of the drum so this is what the figure given in our data handbook in page number 267 page number 267 of 
page number 267, figure 8 is. See here, the line of action of FT that passes through the uh, fulcrum point. Say, if I extend this, this passes through the, uh, what? The fulcrum point. So, the value of C, that is what? The distance between the line of action of FT and fulcrum point is to be considered here as zero because the FT that passes through the uh, fulcrum point. And uh, in this case, if uh, this is related to figure A of the data handbook, say figure A. So related to figure A, this is rotating or this drum is rotating in clockwise direction. So and the FT that acts towards the fulcrum point, towards the fulcrum point. And uh, the particular notations, all the notations, they are represented here. Suppose if the block is placed upside, so that what happens? The tangential force that will be acting towards the fulcrum point when the drum rotates in anti-clockwise direction. So here it is rotating in clockwise direction, but uh, both of the things, they are same only. Suppose if I consider this sketch or this sketch, so the equation, what I get for the calculation of F, that remains same. Right, so that's why, suppose if I consider this figure, if I consider this figure, uh, then, so I have to consider the equilibrium condition. What is that equilibrium condition? Uh, summation of all the forces exerted on the uh, lever or acting on the lever, they are equated to zero. So with respect to that, if I take the moment about the fulcrum pin, if I take the moment about the fulcrum pin, so then the summation of moments is equated to zero here. Summation of moments about the fulcrum pin that is equal to zero. So here, if I consider this particular figure, if I consider this figure, so the moment taken about this particular point is given by F into the perpendicular distance. So perpendicular distance is A plus B here. So F into A plus B. So no other force is acting here. Say if I consider FT that passes through the fulcrum pin so that is equal to zero and only another force that is acting here fn and which is rotating in the opposite direction of this one so this is moving in this direction that is anti clockwise direction and this one is in the clockwise direction so that it is taken to the other side of the equal sign that is what fn into the perpendicular distance that is b so this distance so that the resulting equation is f equal to f into a plus b equal to fn into B. But uh, we want the expression which is to be expressed in terms of Ft. But Fn is what? Fn is Ft divided by mu. So Fn is replaced by Ft by mu. So that uh, this is equal to Ft by mu into B. So this is what the expression that we are getting here. So if I simplify this, so F is kept here itself. So which is called as the actuating force. F is equal to Ft into B divided by mu into A plus B. So this A plus B is taken here. So that this is the resulting equation for F. So this is equation number 13.17, A page number 267 of the data handbook. Suppose if I consider this expression or this figure. So in this case also same equation that I get, say F into, so this is giving this direction, uh, the moment is exerted in clockwise. So this I write first, F to A plus B is equal to, so no other force is considered here, only this Fn that is acting here. So this gives the moment in the opposite direction. So this is written uh, to the, or at the other side, say Fn multiplied by this perpendicular distance that is B. So the resulting expression is as good as the same equation what I have got here. So this is what the particular uh, arrangement of the figure. So the drum is rotating in clockwise here, but the drum is rotating or the shoe is a block is wheel is rotating in anti clockwise here. So even though the case is like this, so the equation, the main thing that we have to focus here is in what a direction the FT that is acting. So FT is acting towards the fulcrum pin. Suppose if the wheel is rotating in clockwise, in that case, FT that acts towards the fulcrum pin. Suppose if the wheel is rotating in this direction and the block is placed upside, in that case, the FT is acting in the uh, towards the fulcrum point itself. So this is what the first case. So with respect to this first case, 
so the equation which is derived here which is called as the force of uh, actuating force or the force required to operate the lever to apply the brake so in this case uh, the actuating force is same whether the direction of tangential force is towards or away from the fulcrum pin so here the fulcrum pin or the rft is towards the fulcrum pin here suppose if i consider the opposite rotation suppose if the wheel is rotating in anti clockwise direction wheel is rotating in anti clockwise direction in that case the ft that acts away from the fulcrum pin away from the fulcrum pin so this is what this case is said to be the fulcrum force of uh, line of action of ft that is away from the fulcrum point so in this case also if i take the moments what happens when the wheel is rotating in counter clockwise direction for this case it is for this figure so here f into bracket a plus b that i get as it is f into a plus b that i get as it is that is equal to again ft is moving in this direction and fn is acting downward and ft is not having any perpendicular distance and the moment exerted by this component will be zero and fn into uh the same equation that you get here fn into b so this is what f equal to a plus b that is equal to fn into b the same equation so with respect to this particular case in this case when the line of action of ft that passes through the fulcrum point the actuating force is same whether the direction of tangential force is towards towards means like this in this particular case or it may be away away from the fulcrum pin so like this if it is the case like this so in that case the equation that will be same as the equation what we got in 13.17 uh, page number 267 so this is related to the first case where the line of action that passes through the fulcrum point so this is the main thing that we have to understand uh, before proceeding with the calculation say because here the main thing by seeing the figure and by seeing the rotation of the drum in which direction that ft acts and how to get the value or the equation of moment uh, sorry force actuating force f next comes the second case in second case the line of action of ft is in between the center of drum and the fulcrum point see here this is what the ft ft if it is acting in between the center as well as fulcrum point here also the same thing this is the center and this is the fulcrum point and the line of action of tangential force this is in between in between the uh, fulcrum uh, these two particular parameters ft is in between center of the drum and fulcrum point and fulcrum point so the line of action of ft that acts that may be either towards the fulcrum point or away from the fulcrum point so first consider the case of direction of ft that is towards the fulcrum point see here when the if i consider the case of uh, uh, the first case that is related to the drum which is rotating in clockwise direction so that the ft that acts in this direction so that this is nothing but the case of ft that acts towards the fulcrum point so this is uh, as good as figure b in data handbook page number 267 so with respect to this case again what i have to consider say it is rotating in clockwise direction and uh, ft is acting towards left and here uh, the block is placed upside so that and the rotation of the drum is like this so the ft direction of ft is in the direction of rotation that is towards the fulcrum pin so either this case or this case both are same but only the thing that we have to see the not the direction of rotation but we have to see the line of action of ft how it acts towards or away from the fulcrum so with respect to this say again to by considering the equilibrium criteria taking moments about the fulcrum point and equating the summation of moments equal to 0 so for that i have to consider the same case or the same uh, uh, approach what i have considered earlier so with this with respect to that again i have to take the moments moments about this fulcrum point so this is moving in anti clockwise direction so f into this particular distance say that is f into a plus b 
and uh, there is another force that also comes here that is ft which is having a perpendicular distance of c so ft is moving in the same direction of the moment given by f so ft into c that is to be added with this and uh, fn that is the force which is acting in this direction so that the moment is given in the clockwise direction so hence it is to be written with the minus sign minus sign or to other, uh, other side of that equal sign that is fn into b so if i re rearrange the expression so f into a plus b that is equal to fn into b as it is minus uh, ft into c so this is taken here and again fn is nothing but ft by mu so fn is replaced by this ratio ft by mu into b minus ft into c so the actuating force f is given by ft into b divided by a plus b a plus b is taken to the denominator here so ft into b divided by a plus b into bracket 1 by mu so this mu is remains here so 1 by mu minus c c is there divided by b if i take this one so this will be the resulting equation so which is there in the data handbook for clockwise rotation when the drum is rotating in clockwise rotation and uh, 13.17 b page number 267 that is to be referred here so this is what the arrangement if the block is placed uh, and the, at the down side suppose if the block is placed at the up side and the uh, wheel is rotating in anti clockwise direction so with respect to that the effort, effort or the tangential force that is acting towards the fulcrum pin again we will be getting the same equation so this is Uh, with respect to case a that is when ft is towards the fulcrum point suppose if uh, i consider the another case that is case b case b is what when the tangential force line of action of the tangential force is away from the fulcrum point away from the fulcrum point like this fulcrum point is here the force of action or the line of action of this force is to away from the fulcrum and this is the again we have to refer figure b of data handbook page number 267 itself and this is the case of counter clockwise rotation of the counter clockwise rotation of the drum so for this the line of action is away from the uh, fulcrum point so if i again consider the same situation what is that summation of moments is equated to zero and taking uh, that moment or summation about this particular point so f into a plus b minus so because this f is giving or ft is giving the opposite moment here so minus of ft into c uh, e minus so this is also giving uh, the same kind of uh, moment here say in the same direction of ft so minus f and b is equal to 0 is equal to 0 and take the uh, terms to the other side say f into a plus b that is kept one side and remaining terms say fn into b that is with the positive sign plus ft into c that is also with the positive sign to the other side again ft by mu is nothing but the replacement of fn and uh, after simplification i will be getting the equation in this particular form f is equal to ft into b divided by a plus b into bracket 1 by mu plus c by b so this is taken from equation number this is there in the data handbook equation 13.17 c page number 267 for counter clockwise rotation so for counter clockwise rotation means in the data handbook it is given like that but the main thing is what the direction of ft towards or away from the fulcrum point so here the fulcrum point or that uh, ft is moving away from the fulcrum point so based upon this concept we have to derive the expression so similarly the third case the third case when the uh, line of action of the ft that lies either above or below above or below above or below the center of the drum and fulcrum point center of the drum and fulcrum point above or below above or below means here the line of action of ft that is above the center of the drum and fulcrum point and with respect to this particular case the figure c of the data handbook figure c of the data handbook page number 267 as we have taken earlier page number 267 here the line of action of ft 
the line of action of ft is below the center of the drum as well as uh, fulcrum point so this case is holds good for this and above case that is holds good for this because here the ft is above the center as well as fulcrum point so both the cases are same but only the arrangement that is the placement of this block is above here and here it is below so related to this the case is given here with respect to this particular sketch now by considering this figure itself where the drum is rotating in clockwise direction clockwise direction and ft is acting towards the fulcrum point and having a distance of c from the fulcrum and b and a they are as usual now again with respect to the same concept the summation of bending moments is taken uh, about the fulcrum point and equating to zero so that f into bracket a plus b that is to be written here uh, and uh, remaining uh, bending moments are the moments given by ft and fn so these are opposite to this moment say like this both are giving the opposite moment therefore they are taken to the other side say fn into b that is fn multiplied by this perpendicular distance plus ft into c ft is the force multiplied by this perpendicular distance so that is c so this equation is again as good as fn is replaced by ft by mu ratio and this is the resulting equation and uh, after simplification you will be getting the equation like this f equal to ft into b divided by a plus b into bracket 1 by mu plus c by b where this is the equation 13.17d in the data handbook page number 267 so this is the third case where the line of action of ft lies above or below the center and fulcrum point and uh, with respect to this the first case is towards the ft acts towards the fulcrum point now with respect to second case ft is away from the fulcrum point so related to this again we have to consider the same situation where the uh, rotation of the drum rotation of the drum is anti clockwise so here we have to consider the case of counter clockwise so this is again from the same kind of figure itself but it is rotating in anti clockwise direction so for that again we have to take the moment summation of moment about the fulcrum point and equate it to zero so that the equation what we get is that is similar to that same previous equation that is 13.17 e now so this is what with respect to the uh, situation or the different cases when say there are three different cases when the line of action of ft that passes through the fulcrum point that is the very first case and then in the line of action of ft that lies in between the center of the drum and the fulcrum point center of the drum and fulcrum point so this is the second case with respect to this ft away from the fulcrum and towards the fulcrum point and the third case when the line of action of tangential force is either above or below the center of drum and fulcrum point here also the same thing ft towards fulcrum and away from fulcrum so if it is a situation when the drum is rotating in clockwise ft acts towards the fulcrum and uh, when drum is rotating in counter clockwise and uh, block is in the lower side and uh, ft is away from the fulcrum point so this is what the situation based upon these things we are, have derived the equation of actuating force f and all these are available in page number 267 of the data handbook so if there is a note which is given here if the direction of ft towards the fulcrum use clockwise rotation formula and if the direction of ft is away from the fulcrum use the counterclockwise formula from the data handbook suppose if the this is what the angle made here that is uh, 2 theta so this these all equations they are holds good when the angle is uh, 2 theta that is equal to 60 degree or less than that less than 60 degrees suppose if uh, the value of uh, 2 theta is greater than 60 degree 60 degree in that situation in that situation we have to uh, change the or we have to follow some particular uh, manipulation or the methodology here say uh, this is the above equations there holds good when the 2 theta value is less than 60 degree if the contact angle or angle of contact is more than 60 degree then the equivalent coefficient of friction mu dash is to be considered in the respective equations wherever 
the equation that carries mu term suppose if it is carries mu here and the angle is more than 60 degree then it is to be replaced by a term mu dash so what is mu dash that is to be calculated like this so this is what the equation and available in page number 266 13.16 m so here 2 theta is in radians theta is the angle which is semi block angle and uh, based upon this you have to get the value of mu dash mu dash is equal to mu into or 4 mu into sin theta divided by 2 theta plus sin of 2 theta so and the normal pressure is this equation by using this equation you have to get the width of the shoe value so that is fn divided by 2 times wr into sin theta whenever the value of uh, theta or the uh, 2 theta is more than 60 degrees right and another thing is that for self engaging uh, uh, brakes or say a brake is said to be self locking only when the force f applied is zero or negative so that is possible in which case in the case where the value of f is uh, for, is to get the value as zero or negative so that is possible in this case that is with respect to uh, 13.17 e that is when the clock is rotating in the counterclockwise direction as applied to third case as applied to second case when the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction there is a possibility of getting the negative value for f wherever there is a minus sign is there there the possibility of getting the uh, self locking brake condition where the value of f is zero or negative in that case only we are able to get or we will be getting the self locking condition otherwise if positive signs are there in the rhs means no problem to, uh, of getting the or saying the brake is self locking or self engaging so this is what the concept of single block brake and in the next session i will take the examples or the problems on this single block brake thank you